This is breaking news. Right now, the Brooklyn District Attorney is providing an update on the death of O'Shea Sibley. The 28-year-old dancer was fatally stabbed at a gas station in Midwood last month. Let's listen in. Balia Kulum, who's also a prosecutor in the Hate Crimes Bureau, uh, we have decided uh, to prosecute this case as a hate crime, and we are moving forward in a joint uh, prosecution with the Homicide Bureau and the Hate Crimes Bureau. When I became District Attorney, I established uh, Brooklyn's first hate, dedicated hate crimes bureau. Uh, unfortunately, it's exactly for these types of cases. Now, as many of you know, O'Shea and his friends were allegedly targeted uh, because they were dancing. Uh, they were being themselves, dancing joyfully to Beyonce music at a Brooklyn gas station, harming no one and refusing to stop even when confronted with anti-black and homophobic slurs demanding that they stop dancing. Uh, my prosecutors have been on this case from day one, and I want to thank the New York City Police Department for their investigation into this matter. Uh, they did a fabulous job securing witnesses and evidence that is necessary to move forward in this case. Uh, our prosecutors have attended the vigils in Manhattan and Brooklyn and traveled to Philadelphia to be with the family of Mr. Sibley uh, uh, during his funeral. We promised the family that we would have a vigorous and thorough prosecution to hold this offender who is 17 years old accountable for his deadly deeds on that day. Uh, the entire community has been victimized by this senseless uh, victimization of Mr. Sibley. Uh, this crime, while clearly impacting his family and loved ones, have impacted the entirety of Brooklyn and the entirety of the city, and I dare say the entire nation. I believe that is the thing that's special about hate crimes, that hate crimes impacts a victim, but it also impacts a community. It robs not just the family, but an entire community of the sense of safety and security. Uh, this entire community, and I'm talking particularly about the gay and, and queer communities of our country, feel particularly vulnerable at this moment in time. As you know, there are many laws being passed in many states that seem to target the LGBTQ community and I think is responsible for increasing uh, rhetoric of hate towards this community. So today, uh, we're announcing, and we just came back from following the indictment, that the 17-year-old man has been charged in this case and indicted with a count of murder in the second degree as a hate crime. A Brooklyn grand jury has fairly uh, heard all of the evidence in this case and has returned that indictment along with other counts. The defendant, uh, because it's elevated as a hate crime murder too, faces a minimum of 20 years jail and a maximum of 25 years in jail to life. Uh, many powerful people across this country have talked about this case and have been concerned that justice prevail. I'm here to tell uh, everyone that we will be fair and thorough in our prosecution. Uh, the allegations made against this 17-year-old are of uh, tremendous import to this city and to this country, and I'm, assure, I'm assuring the community that we we're taking this case very seriously. Um, and we're going to make sure that justice prevails in this case. O'Shea came to New York to follow his dream, like many New Yorkers. He came here, he was a, a choreographer, he was a dancer. He was here um, to shine a light on himself and really shine a light on this community in, in, in New York City. And his light was shut off, was killed um, for senseless reasons, reasons that I think have to be addressed. This intolerance that we have in our country and in our city of people who are different than ourselves is something that we have to make sure can never stand in this city. And so I'm here to say together with this team behind me that we're going to stand up for Mr. Sibley, for the rights of he has to dance, to be exuberant, uh, the right that he had not to stop dancing because it offended someone else 
Um, that's a right that all New Yorkers share in values that we all believe in, the right to be yourself and not to be afraid to live your true self because someone else can be offended by it and dare take your life. So I hope that this message is loud and clear. In Brooklyn, we will never tolerate acts of hate crimes or any intolerance that's directed at any particular groups. And in this particular case, uh, I believe that the hate crimes that are alleged in this indictment show both an anti-black bias and an anti-LGBTQ bias. So thank you for being here today. Uh, we're limited in what we can say more. Uh, we will announce that the indictment is uh, going to be arraigned tomorrow in the youth court because of his age. And because of that, I'm not releasing his name today, uh, but he'll be arraigned tomorrow in court in Judge Walker's court. Um, and so tomorrow will be the next step in the journey for justice. Are there any on-point questions? Mr. Attorney Gonzalez, a question yes. about the hate crimes specifically. There was some talk in the beginning that this was, uh, the defendant in this case said that he was Muslim. His attorney has come out and said he was Christian. Is there anything on camera that can corroborate what he was saying to the victim in this case that would support this being a hate crime? I'm not going to get it. The question is, are, is there any evidence of uh, anti, either anti-black or anti-gay uh, comments? And, and the answer is, there are many witnesses in the case who have come forward. There's been testimony put before the jury. We're going to play this out in the courtroom of law, but we feel very confident that we've established that the motive, and that's the thing about hate crimes. In most crimes, you have to prove who did it. Um, and that that crime was actually committed. In a hate crime, there's the added burden of establishing the bias or the motivation for the crime in substantial part. It's clear to me, under the circumstances of this case, that the insubstantial part of this attack was caused because people were offended by Mr. Sibley and his friends, you know, dancing and celebrating. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the religion is of the uh, perpetrator. The bias, we allege, was in his heart and his statements. I have a follow-up to that. Yes. There were other people who were there that night with the defendant. Were they involved in any of this hate speech that you allege? And will they be charged or are you investigating them? Yeah, they, they, at this point, we're only going to talk about this immediate indictment. Uh, but we believe that you know there were two groups confronting each other. And the group that Mr. Sibley was in was the people who were being assailed with anti-gay and anti-black uh, statements. Well, what, what people be charged? Are you looking at charges for other people that were in that group? At this moment, the, the only case that I'm going to talk about is the immediate indictment. Um, but tomorrow when you come to court, you can ask that question. Remember, we're very limited in what we can say until the, the arraignment takes place tomorrow. So I think the video has been publicly displayed, so I'm free to comment on the video. I think what the video shows is you know, that Mr. Sibley uh, was rightfully in the position to speak out and protect himself and his friends from anti-gay and anti-black slurs, and that what transcended after that was a crime. Uh, we allege, uh, as you can see in the video, Mr. Sibley and his friends weren't armed. We know there's no question that they weren't on. They have uh, no shirt on. And so uh, we know that defending yourself from being an anti-gay or an anti-black comment and arguing back is not a cause for someone to take a weapon and do what was done in this case. And so we're pretty confident that the uh, charges as the grand jury has found them will be proven at trial. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone.
This has been breaking news.